with regard to specific categories of drugs, we're going to start off with depressants. And of course, we know that depressants decrease or reduce activity in the central nervous system. So people feel relaxed. They also might, particularly with small doses, feel more sociable. Remember that the higher centers or higher functions of the brain are depressed or inhibited first. So the parts of your brain that tell you, maybe that's not such a good idea, we shouldn't do that right now, get depressed first. So people might seem more outgoing, less inhibited, more social or sociable because they have lowered inhibitions. But of course, with increased use of a depressant drug, you're gonna start depressing or inhibiting activity in lower functions of the brain including those that keep you alive. So depressants include alcohol, opioids, and sedatives, hypnotics, and anti-anxiety medication. With regard to alcohol, moderate drinking is a lower risk pattern of alcohol intake where we see one to two drinks per day. Heavy drinking, more than two drinks per day for men and more than one drink per day for women, and binge drinking is uh, five or more drinks at a time and um, for both men and women. Alcohol consumption in the United States, we see one-fourth of Americans age 12 or older actually binge drink. 70% of adults don't drink excessively either because they abstain or drink in moderation. And nearly one-fourth of Americans 12 or older binge drink including 7% who binge drink at least five days a month. 42% of alcohol is consumed by 14% of young adults. So those binge drinkers are uh, sort of eating up the supply. Alcohol consumption in the United States, again, we see heavy drinking in college. 5% of those who use alcohol are physiologically dependent. And remember those hallmark symptoms of dependence dependence or tolerance and withdrawal. With abuse, you might see decline or impairment in social and occupational functioning, but unless tolerance and withdrawal are dependent, you wouldn't diagnose dependence. So, and delirium tremens or the DTs, life-threatening withdrawal symptoms that can result from chronic alcohol abuse. It starts with profound anxiety, agitation, and confusion, and it's followed by seizures, disorientation, hallucinations, and lethargy. And our bodies have an enzyme that cleans up the alcohol from our system, aldehyde dihydrogenase, or ALDH. It counteracts the toxins that build up as alcohol is metabolized and not everyone has the same availability of aldh of course males have more particularly younger males and um your gen genetic makeup so asian americans or asian individuals whether they're american or not have less aldh and tend sometimes have a negative reaction to alcohol because of that it's uncomfortable for them because their body doesn't metabolize it. Food or medications in the body can also affect how alcohol is absorbed. Carbonated beverages and aspirin increase or speed up alcohol absorption and reduce the efficiency of cleanup and food has the opposite effect. But alcohol has a strong effect on the developing brain and um, the effects of alcohol abuse on neurological development are most profound through the mid-20s. So when we see that heavy binge drinking by the young adults, it's most likely to affect them at that point in life. The college years are a particularly high-risk time, not only because that's when individuals are more likely to become addicted, but their brains are still developing and they're more at risk for long-term uh, developmental problems.